A rocket attack on the Baghdad airport kills Iran's most revered military leader and a senior official in Iraq's paramilitary forces. Now, the Pentagon announced tonight that the attack was a U.S. airstrike. Here's the statement. At the direction of the president, the U.S. military has taken decisive defensive action to protect U.S. personnel abroad by killing Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Quds Force, a U.S.-designated foreign terrorist organization. Now, General Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region. General Soleimani and his Quds Force were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of American and coalition service members and the wounding of thousands more. He had orchestrated attacks on coalition bases in Iraq over the last several months, including the attack on December 27th, culminating in the death and wounding of additional American and Iraqi personnel. General Soleimani also approved the attacks on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad that took place this week. The strike was aimed at deterring future Iranian attack plans. The United States will continue to take all necessary action to protect our people and our interests wherever they are around the world. Now, this from the president uh, a few moments ago. He tweeted just an image of an American flag. We're covering every aspect of this story from Iraq to Washington. CNN's Arwa Damon is in Baghdad. Ryan Brown is at the Pentagon. Jim Shudo is here in New York. Boris Sanchez is with the president in Florida. Let's start here with Jim. You've been following this all night. What are your sources telling you? I think Americans have to understand how significant a figure Soleimani was in Iran, arguably the second most powerful man in all of Iran mm -hmm. after the supreme leader. Uh, from the American perspective, and rightly so, a terrorist leader responsible for the deaths of hundreds of U.S. soldiers in Iraq. Or Iran shipped in highly sophisticated IEDs responsible for so many of the deaths of U.S. troops there. In Iran, he is seen as a revered military leader. There were some in Iran who thought he might be the next leader of Iran. Uh, so he had enormous respect and position there. That gets at both his power uh, in terms of orchestrating these attacks against Americans around the region, but it also gets at how Iran is going to see this and how Iran may very well react to this in terms of retaliation. Speaking with officials uh, who cover the region for the Pentagon tonight, a key concern are U.S. Uh, diplomats and soldiers deployed not just in Iraq but around the region. The Quds Force that Soleimani led, it, it's a terrorist organization with, a posi with positions and, and abilities and capabilities around the world. So not just U.S. diplomats and soldiers deployed in Iraq yeah. but elsewhere could be vulnerable tonight uh, in terms of retaliation. So hugely significant for Iran, hugely significant for eliminating uh, a leader responsible for an enormous number of U.S. deaths, uh, but also hugely significant because we can expect as a country, as Americans, retaliation here, escalation. And that should be a major concern. And that's the point you're going to be with us all night that I want to come back to, that line in the statement in which uh, uh, we hear that this was an intent to deter yeah. future attacks and how realistic that will be. Let's go to Arwa now in Baghdad. What are you hearing uh, on the ground about this, this shelling as it's described, uh, how it happened, what it happened, and what we know at this hour? Well, Victor, it's being better described as a precision targeting of what it would seem to be from the images that we're seeing, uh, two vehicles who were hit just on the outskirts of Baghdad's international airport. When these reports first came out, it was initially reported as being three Katusha rockets. Now we know that that convoy contained not just Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force, but also a very prominent uh, commander here, a member of what's known as Iraq's um, Popular Mobilization Force. This is a predominantly Shia paramilitary force. The leader of Qata'ib uh, Hezbollah, that victor is the very same group that the U.S. had targeted on Sunday. And it is members of or supporters of this paramilitary force who were the protesters who were outside of the U.S. Embassy, who were attempting to scale those walls. I think one of the many reasons why what has unfolded is so shocking to a certain degree is that it seemed as if, at least on a very temporary, perhaps superficial level, the situation had reached a standstill in the sense that those protesters had withdrawn. They were going to be allowing the Iraqi parliament uh, time to go through the motions that it needed to go through to begin debating a bill about uh, the potential U.S. troop withdrawal from Iraq. 
this targeting of Qasem Soleimani and of the head of Kata'ib Hezbollah really puts us right now, Victor, in uncharted territory. And let's take that now to Ryan Brown at the Pentagon. Uncharted territory, we hear from, from Arwa Damon. What are you hearing from your sources at the Pentagon and what they're expecting? Uh, I think what we've heard from Jim and from Arwa is that there will likely be some retaliation. What are you hearing about the preparation for that? Well, it's interesting, Victor. I think before this strike uh, took place, the Pentagon had been moving significant new military resources into the region. Uh, at the time, they were saying it was because of these uh, militia groups attempting to uh, penetrate the outer perimeter of the embassy uh, in Baghdad. But now those forces are also in place to respond to any potential crisis. I mean, that included more troops, uh, Marines to the embassy itself, but also a battalion of paratroopers uh, to neighboring Kuwait with another brigade on standby. The U.S. had been anticipating uh, some kind of activity by Iran for some time. The threat levels had been raised in recent weeks. Uh, we, they, the U.S. blamed Iran for some 11 rocket attacks on U.S. bases. So they've been moving a lot of forces into the region to defend against Iranian threats. And again, those forces would likely be called upon if there is any kind of retaliation. But interesting enough, earlier today, Secretary of Defense Mark Esper kind of laid out uh, some of the rationale behind this strike without talking about the strike itself. He said he blamed Iran and the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps for these attacks on U.S. military facilities, for the demonstrations at the embassy. And he said that the U.S. would not wait, that they would take preemptive action if they detected a threat, saying the game had changed. Now, he didn't reference the Soleimani strike specifically, but it's clear now that this strike very much fits in with that new strategy by the U.S. Uh, let's go now to uh, Caitlin, traveling with the president. She's in Florida. The Pentagon statement says this, this was... Uh, specifically at the direction of the president. The president tweeted just uh, an American flag moments ago. What are you hearing from the White House? Yeah, so far, that's the only thing we've heard from President Trump. He's been silent on this ever since. And we just heard from a White House official who said that we should not expect any statement from them, to them tonight. Instead, they are simply referring us to this statement from the Pentagon instead. Now, as far as what the president is doing, we know that he's at his club there behind me at Mar-a-Lago. He's been there for several hours. He briefly went to his golf course earlier today for a few hours where CNN cameras saw him out on the golf course, uh, though it's unclear who the president is with. And he returned about 5 o'clock. Eastern time. Now, since then, we know the president has gone to dinner, but it's unclear what his other activities have been. As far as who's around him, we know there have been several White House officials here, but one notable one is the National Security Advisor, Robert O'Brien, who had been here earlier briefly this week when he came down on Sunday with the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, and the Defense Secretary, Mark Esper. That's when they talked about how they had briefed the president on those strikes the United States had carried out earlier this week. They only spoke with reporters for about three minutes, and they didn't take any questions, and then they got back on a flight about two hours later and left, only being on the ground here for about three hours total. Well, O'Brien has since returned. We know that the defense secretary is not on property tonight, but O'Brien is here with the president. And we're essentially still waiting to see what else we hear from them while watching the reaction come into this, seeing the president's allies praise this, saying that they believe it was a measured response. It was proportionate to uh, what the what Iran has done, their uh, provocations over the last several months, while you're also seeing some Democrats and critics of the president's come out and question this decision by the United States, which, of course, we should note in this statement, it does say this was done at the direction of President Trump. But Jim, the supporters of the president calling this a proportionate uh, response, um, everyone we've spoken with calls this a dramatic escalation. Uh, put into context what we're hearing from, from the president's supporters. Well, listen, ultimately that'll be up to Iran, yeah. right? Because Iran's going to decide how they're going to retaliate here. And keep in mind, I Americans at home need to be prepared tonight for an escalating conflict with Iran. And, and, and arguably, we've already been in that for a number of months. Iran has attacked tankers in the Persian Gulf. It shot down a U.S. drone, you'll remember. It attacked Saudi oil facilities. Uh, it orchestrated uh, a protest around the U.S. embassy there and an attack on the U.S. embassy. And the U.S. blames Iran for a strike that killed a U.S. contractor, which, yeah. which led to airstrikes against Iranian forces this past weekend. So already we've been in something of a, of a simmering conflict with the exchange of military actions. Action. This raises it significantly in light of the fact that, that you have killed uh, a senior Iranian official here who, who America views as a terrorist, and, and he has enormous amount of evidence he's guilty of terrorist attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq, killing hundreds. Iran, though, views him as, as a significant official uh, in their leadership. 
Uh, so, so they will feel the need to, to respond. The question is what they consider proportionate at this point. And, and as I said earlier, uh, the Quds force that he led is expert at doling out this kind of violence. And not just in a country such as Iraq against military targets, but sadly, outside of Iraq, around the region and, and around the world, uh, against soft targets. Uh, and, and we should note that Soleimani in the past has publicly threatened attacks on the U.S. homeland as well. So, so a real concern as to how, how Iran, and again, it will be up to Iran to decide what, in their view, they consider proportionate.